Hello, St. Mary Magdalene, and thanks for tuning in to another weekly video with me, Father Chris. It's a great joy to be able to be with you this week again to continue this weekly series. So for the last two weeks, we've been talking about prayer, different prayer techniques, different styles, different methods to help us pray. We've heard the Lexio Divina and Eucharistic Adoration. Big shout out. Thank you so much to all of you who signed up for Eucharistic Adoration. We are so close. We're less than 10 hours that we need signed up for for coverage. So please, please, please sign up and let's get those hours covered so we can bring the beating heart of our parish spiritual life back as we adore the Lord round the clock 24-7. What a beautiful gift. So again, let me thank you to all of our adorers and those that are still contemplating signing up. Please, please help us out. We have less than 10. I think it's like somewhere between 7 and 9 uh, last time I checked. So we're so close. And I'm really excited. I'm really pleased with the results and with all of you signing up for that. So certainly thank you. Thank you. Then we heard last week, too, from one of our own parishioners about the Hallow app and just the way that that has helped her enter into a deeper life of prayer. We also then followed up. We sent out a little flock note that had a short little blurb with a, with a little access code uh, that, several, that, that makes the app available to all of us and all those that want to partake in it. So it's only a big, big resource in that as well. So we've got Lexio, we've got Eurist Adoration, we have the Hallow app that has a lot of talks, recordings, and it's just great. Great, great, great prayer tools and techniques. We also have another one that is very much a part of our parish community and of our parish life, especially during Lent, and that is, of course, Stations of the Cross. And what a beautiful devotion. For me personally, Stations didn't become part of my regular prayer life during Lent until really seminary. I was in seminary from 2007 to 2013, and those six years really gave me the opportunity to delve more deeply into the beauty of the Stations of the way of the cross, walking with Christ in his final hours and in that final journey he made to Calvary. And what a beautiful, beautiful gift it is and how blessed we are that it's such a part of our parish life. And because it is Lent, we are going to have Stations of the Cross on Fridays. We have them on February 19th, February 26th, March 5th, and March 12th. All four of those nights, the 19th, the 26th, the 5th, and the 12th, they will be at 6 p.m. They will be in the church. So we have those available for everyone during Lent. We also have, though, a set of stations up in our Adoration Chapel. Those are up there. You can pray with at your leisure as you, uh, whenever you feel that desire, whenever you're spending time with the Lord in prayer. So they feel free to utilize that and to pray the stations in the chapel. Please be considerate if there are other people in the chapel too, but feel free to pray the stations anytime in the Adoration Chapel. We also have a third option. Several volunteers set this up for us. In our parking lot, we also have a Stations of the Cross on mounted on some of the light fixtures on 14 of our light posts out there. So that's the option. You can pray them in your car. You can pray them outside. You can walk. You can drive them. However you want to pray the stations outside. What a beautiful, beautiful gift, truly, that is. So certainly thank you to all of those that made that happen. What a great gift. I know for me, again, making this devotion and entering into this, it really ha has given me an opportunity to really reflect on just exactly what Christ went through and to be able to walk with him even for a few a few minutes and to just be there to enter into this and receive from him the fullness of the great gift of his death and resurrection and just to enter into that in such a prayerful and meaningful and powerful way is to make that spiritual pilgrimage to the Holy Land, to Calvary, to Golgotha, where our Lord was crucified and died. So we have that available. The final weeks of Lent, March 19th, is the Solemnity of St. Joseph. So we'll have our big patronal feast day, a big universal patronal feast day, right? He's the patron of the universal church, so we celebrate that. That's a solemnity. It's going to be glorified. It's going to be just with great dignity and reverence, a time of great joy. We'll have a holy hour that evening as well, so you're welcome to come and join us for that. But because we're having the Mass in the holy hour, that means there's no stations that night because it is a Friday, March 19th. Then the following week, March 26th, our teens, our youth group, is putting on for us all a living stations, a passion play. <laughs> How exciting is this? This is the first time 
that our teens are, are, are doing this. This is the first time we're having this beautiful living stations, this passion play. So I'm so proud of our young people and all those involved in helping to coordinate this and to make it happen, to plan it, to script write, to make the costumes, to get the sets going. They're going to be a, they're going to do a phenomenal job. So they're doing that for us at 6 p.m. on March the 26th. They're also doing a bonus showing for us on Good Friday. We have another opportunity to come and support our teens on April the 2nd, and that will be at 12 p.m. Again, that's April 2nd at 12 p.m. So March 26th and April 2nd, two opportunities to come and see the living stations put on by our youth group. So big shout out to the teens. I'm really proud. Obviously, I'm really excited too, as you all can tell. Uh, what a great gift that will be for the parish. And so certainly, thank you. Uh, beautiful devotion, lots of great things happening during Lent. So please uh, walk to the Lord. Let the Lord lead us during this time in the desert, this time of preparation, of mortification, and of penance. Truly really allow our hearts to come and to experience the fullness of the Lord in all things that he desires to give to us. We walk with him and we discipline ourselves so that he can be the greatest priority, the greatest focus of our life. That's what the great mystery of Lent is and why this penitential season is also such a powerful season, such a, a holy season, and such for so many people that I've met, it's their favorite time of the year. So to all those I love Lenters out there, here's your time. Walk to the Lord. To the rest of us, let's walk towards the Lord and let's offer this up and really unite ourselves to the Lord spiritually. Thank you all. Uh, again, for walking with us and journeying with us during this Lenten season. This is a time truly to grow in holiness. And let's close with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you and praise you for everything that you give to us. We thank you truly for this holy season of Lent, for this opportunity to encounter you in the desert, to lead ourselves out with Christ as he's tempted and faces the challenges of this world with great faith, hope, and love for you. We pray for the grace that following the example of Christ, we too may turn away from sin and rest firmly in you and in your word, that we might live with you, for you, in you, and by you. We call this through Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Mary Magdalene, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. God bless everyone. Go in peace.